Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. Brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware at 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York. 631-756-1125 for the best prices in town. And uh, they're not just serving folks on Long Island. Anybody in the tri-state area that deals with Omni can tell you they do have the lowest prices on rock salt. They've got spreaders, snow blowers. I love this 30-inch blade one. Uh, really looks nice. And uh, here's your spreaders. Uh, we've got Pelado, Mag Ice Pellets and Flakes, uh, very good snow mo uh, melting products. Uh, everything you need to make sure your home is uh, safe and clean this winter uh, when these winter storms come by. 631-756-1125 is the phone number, the website, omnitruevalue.com. So let's get things underway here. Uh, we're seeing a storm developing off the southeast coast. Uh, we've been talking about this storm as uh, the mechanism that's going to set the ball rolling with regards to the system that we're dealing for Sunday into Monday. Uh, it uh, is not going to be doing much of anything other than perhaps grazing Cape Cod uh, and uh, maybe getting some echoes of, of rain close to eastern Long Island. It's going to be big, bring big snows to uh, mo most much of Nova Scotia, New, eastern New Brunswick, and on up uh, toward uh, western Newfoundland and points north into Labrador. So this is an important storm system in terms of how it's driving the overall pattern, and it is going to have an impact on the outcome of uh, our weather system. So let's look first. I want to show you WPC in terms of total liquid melted precipitation. Now, along the immediate coast, it's looking like much of this is going to wind up being rain. Uh, go just inland. Uh, might be from I-95 north and west is probably where the snow line starts. And uh, it's going to go up in a rather tight fashion. So it's, that's the tough part of the forecast is figuring uh, how many miles it does it take for you to go to a coating to a couple of inches to four and then maybe to eight. Um, right now, in terms of total precip, we're looking from anywhere from three quarters of an inch to maybe as much as an inch and a quarter. And take a look across the Carolinas, down back and through Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Georgia, where we're looking at uh, two plus inches of melted liquid. A lot of that is going to be in the form of uh, sleet, freezing rain, and then heavy, wet snow. Um, it's quite possible that some of the mountains uh, in North Georgia, for example, in western South Carolina, and certainly in the western half of North Carolina, could wind up with a foot plus when uh, this is all said and done. So as far as uh, WPC's forecast probabilities here for um, this storm, uh, the uh, they've also been they've actually been really uh, fairly aggressive uh, all the way through this, and the blue marks the 50% line uh, probability of at least roughly about two to three inches of snow or snow and sleet equivalent. And you see uh, that runs up uh, from uh, northeast Georgia, uh, cuts uh, North Carolina in half. Uh, runs close to the Washington, D.C., or just north of the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area, just north of Philadelphia, just north of New York City, and actually a fair distance west of Boston. And, of course, you see the 70 and 90 percent probabilities, 70 percent in the light blue, 90 percent probability uh, in the red. So uh, we're talking about uh, what could be a widespread snowfall up and down the interior of the uh, northeast and mid-Atlantic states and also down uh, into the southeastern states. It's not going to be that far from the coast. Uh, you can probably just take a drive, uh, go north and west of New York City by a handful of miles, and you're going to start running into accumulating snow when this is all uh, said and done. So let's run through the models. There are a number of things today. You know, if you're following the storm, I'm sure you're on top of the fact that uh, folks are talking about how the models went to the west and and then they went to the east and they're doing back and you know this sort of back and forth thing. Uh, it really has to do with the fact that we have three weather systems that actually four, if you count the big high that's going to be building in. But when we look at these upper air features, and, and the more upper air features you have, the greater chance there is for error and change from run to run. So our first storm goes out. Now, here's our second system, and I'm using the European model. We're looking at the 18,000-foot level because I want to show you uh, the strong upper features in play. Uh, there's another upper trough that's running up through the western Great Lakes. That really is not going to do much of anything. Uh, but look how vigorous that southern system is. And then uh, on uh, Sunday night, Monday, 
we have a, a system that's going to be dropping down from the Great Lakes, and you so, sort of see it here. And we've been talking about the fact that how it's acting as kind of a lever and it's lifting up the upper low. But one of the things that's happening in recent runs is that the two systems, rather than being phased together, are becoming separate. And this is causing uh, the models to kind of have a problem with where is the surface low going to be. And that's why we see it uh, jumping around the way it's been uh, jumping around. So uh, here's uh, here's what it looks like on the surface. Just want to set this all up. Uh, we don't see anything, obviously, here today with the storm offshore. Uh, it is going to be the mechanism to pull down some very cold air. Uh, it uh, might even briefly change the snow on Cape Cod, southeastern Maine. You see the snow up in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia with the uh, low approaching Nova Scotia and then straddling uh, the coast offshore. Meanwhile, the next southern, the southern system is getting ready to move in on Saturday. We have a very cold high to the north. We're going to see cold air drain down the eastern seaboard. Look for temperatures in the low teens and single digits Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, upper teens and low 20s from southern New England and the lower Hudson Valley all the way down into northern Virginia. And then Saturday night, another cold night. So Sunday morning, we're going to be starting out with single digits and teens. The high is going to go out in what we would call a bad position. It goes east of Cape Cod. You want the high to be up, say, in the St. Lawrence Valley or maybe in western Maine or, or perhaps uh, sitting in Quebec kind of pressing down. But because the high is going out, we're going to have to start thinking about warm air coming in from off the ocean. And the model's picking up on that, the GFS uh, with the rain actually uh, into Long Island and southern New Jersey, but it does have snow for central and north Jersey and Pennsylvania, and of course back down into Virginia and West Virginia. Uh, the warmer air is going to come in on a screaming east wind Sunday night into Monday morning. I think you're going to see a changeover to rain uh, as uh, far west as I-81 I in, in southern Pennsylvania. Northeastern Pennsylvania, I'm not sure. Um, it may go to rain for a short time right before it ends in northern New Jersey. And then, of course, by Monday morning, because this thing's moving quick, uh, the low is going to be right on the GFS anyway, kind of tracks from northeastern Virginia right over to New York City. And in reality, by the way, there's a secondary low that's trying to form. But because we don't have a blocking high, it can't really take over. And the cold air uh, has a real tough time holding in after a while. It's a fast event. If you're on the coast... Coastal flooding, uh, we got a full moon this weekend, so we're talking coastal flooding, and I think it could be at least moderate coastal flooding for Long Island, New Jersey Shore, down to Delaware as the low moves on up. So bear that in mind if you live right along the immediate coast. The storm is going to pull away uh, to the northeast after that, and then we're going to just go cold and dry as we move into the first part of next week. Now, in terms of snow amounts, I'm just going to illustrate here I don't usually like to use these snowfall forecast maps because uh, in terms of the specific numbers, uh, I also tend to like to cut these things in half uh, when uh, when I see some of the numbers. And by the way, you can find this on Tropical Tidbits or PivotalWeather.com uh, if you want to look at it close up. But uh, I, I'm going with the idea, and, and I'll get a little bit tighter here, uh, I'm going with the idea that right along the immediate coast, uh, there'll be just maybe a couple of flakes or ice pellets at the start. You start to go north and west. Um, you head up into northern New Jersey. I'm thinking two to four, maybe three to five. The Hudson Valley, sort of the same thing. You get into start to get into northeastern Pennsylvania. And then if you go further west, uh, I'm talking eight to 12. I think if you draw a line from about Harrisburg uh, to maybe not too far from Scranton, from there west, uh, to Western PA, we're talking 8 to 12 with some locally higher amounts down over a foot. And you can, by the way, see you get down into Western Virginia uh, and Western North Carolina, you're looking at big numbers there of a foot plus. And I think that's certainly possible uh, a little further south, uh, because I know some folks from the deep south are watching this. This is the GFS, by the way, the, uh, G the uh, European and uh, the NAM models are actually colder and show more snow. But you can see how far the southern extent of this. And one of the things that I would look for in terms of uh, this whole thing and how it plays out is watch the track. We're going to watch the track of the upper low. 
okay, because that's this system here, because that usually the heaviest snow falls just north of the track of the upper low by about maybe out 50 to 75 miles in a narrow band there. So we're going to watch the track of the upper low as it moves on up, and we're going to continue uh, to watch it, of course, as it moves up uh, to the northeast, through the mid-Atlantic and northeast. And right now, the upper low is taking a track inland of the coast, which again suggests that the heaviest snows are going to be uh, inland. And I'm thinking from the Pennsylvania state line and points westward and go north and west. Less snows as you head down into southeastern Pennsylvania. And then again, very little along the coast. And by the way, you can check out my, my uh, early call snow forecast maps along with uh, some more analysis of this on uh, my uh, subscription site uh, at patreon.com slash meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Uh, it's just two bucks a month. Uh, you get weather every day, uh, and you can message me at any time, and I will respond to you. So um, give it a look. Uh, if you're into weather, uh, it's uh, we try to keep it fun, and we do a lot of extra stuff too, including extra videos. Weather in 5 brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware at 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, 631-756-1125 for the best prices in town. OmniTrueValue.com is the website. Uh, tonight, the Joe and Joe Weather Show, and that is going to be on my YouTube channel, Joe Chaffee, at uh, 7.30 Eastern Time, and we're going to have, if you missed last night's show, it's available on podcasts. Uh, if you go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, or wherever you, you uh, keep your podcasts at their home, um, just uh, check out the Joe and Joe Weather Show we had uh, meteorologist uh, Bill Goodman from the National Weather Service in Upton, New York on Long Island, and retired meteorologist Tony Gigi from uh, the National Weather Service in Mount Holly uh, in uh, southern New Jersey. And we had a great show. And of course, we talked about the storm and everything we talked about yesterday is still relevant today with regards to this. So you can check that out. And of course, you want to watch the video. It is on my YouTube channel. Tonight, we're going to have uh, meteorologist Andy Gregorio uh, who uh, worked for a long time up uh, in uh, one of the, I believe it was the CBS station up in Albany, New York. And he's going to be our guest because we all went to school together. So uh, that ought to be a fun, uh, fun time. That's at 730 Eastern. So here's our storm on the latest GFS model. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully see you tonight. <laughs> 